So the tune that we just played is a tune that we quickly put together for this presentation with Nathaniel. How about it for Nathaniel? <laughs> so I teach music in Addis in a few schools, three schools. Say. So one of the common things that I see, especially, particularly in one school, uh, that's set up like a conservatory, like um, for lack of a better term, classical music. Uh, I teach the students in fifth year and fourth year. I think uh, some of you know which school I'm talking about. So um, it's good to learn the music in that way. But um, uh, classical music is mostly reading notes, which is it's really good to refine our crafts as musicians. But it doesn't require a lot of improvisation. So usually we're playing some composer's music and interpreting it, m mostly reading the notes. Uh, so these students, when they come to my class, a lot of them are really afraid to improvise. They've never done it before. So when I ask them to improvise, there's a lot of fear. It's like somebody pulled the rug out of under or out, the rug out under their feet, and they're floating in air, nothing to stand on. So as uh, Bobby McFerrin, a famous singer, said, improvisation is the courage. 
to leap from one knot to the next. So there's a lot of improvisation or soloing is doing it in the moment right now. The tune that we just played, if, I have, if we have to play it again right now, it will be completely different. I'll show you a couple of things, uh, what we did. We had a, a couple of motifs. So the first motif was this. So this was the first motif. And then there was an interlude or sort of uh, a tag to close the song. And that was this one. Together, three, four. So these are the only two things that we worked, we worked out. Everything else in between, everything I did was improvised. So these are the only two things we worked together. And the rest is, so just in the moment, doing something right here, which is great. There's a lot of risk taking, but that's the fun thing about it. Uh, so let me explain a little bit about uh, what the role of our musical instruments are. This is a bass guitar. Usually a bass guitar has four strings. This four strings. Uh, this particular one is a six string bass guitar. So I have uh, an extended range. Uh, so it's like instead of playing a piano this big, it's like playing a piano a little bit with more range. So there's a low B string here and a high C string here. So the bass guitar has a, a low sound. But with this extended range, I can almost sound like a guitar. So it gives me more, more range to play. And the drum set, as you know, is also a, a supportive instrument. These both instruments are, are not really in the spotlight most of the time. They're like the foundation of a band. When there's a band, the, the drummer and the bass player are they're like married together. They will have to play together, lock together. So if you decide if anybody wants to be a musician and you want to get the attention of the girls, it's not the instrument you have to pick. <laughs> well I'll take that back. You know, girls like drummers sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes we have to be the leaders. Us we push the group to go one direction and the musicians will listen to us and they get it, they will go that way. Other times we're followers. We have to follow what the soloists are doing. So we have to lead and follow. So there's some uh, back and forth going between these two. So I'll give you an example of how we can do, like how we can be creative. Uh, James Jamerson is a very famous bass player from Motown, Motown Records. He did like 70% of all the songs that we know from the 60s and 70s, Stevie Wonder, Temptations, Supremes, Jackson 5, uh, Marvin Gaye, every, everybody. So he's a genius bass player. So for example, uh, a producer will come or an arranger in a studio will come to James Jamerson and they know he's incredible. He was the highest paid uh, at that time as a musician, studio musician, the highest paid. And they know he can be very creative on the studio and do magic with his playing. So when they approach him with a piece of music, they usually don't write music for him. They give him the chord, chord charts of the song, the scales, the chord, the rhythm, the feel of the song, but they don't write out the bass line for him because they know what they write will never be as good as what he plays. So, he's, so the, usually they let him do that. For example, they will come to him and say, James, we have this tune for you. It goes like this. So do your bass line on it. So they will do something like this, for example. Mike, three, four. Two notes, C. Da, da, da. So this is, a, this is the song, this is the, the only thing that they give him. So James Jamerson, being a genius, he will say, okay, what can I do with this? Okay, let's try it again. I'll do it. On the moment, he'll do this. So three, four. Did I notice you? Uh, so My Girl, right? This famous song. 
So this hook that he created on the moment could be equally famous, if not more famous than the song itself. So people know this song forever. Another example. Another producer will come and say, okay, this is the bass line. Three, four. Sorry. Uh, yeah, three, four. Mm -hmm. So that's what he has to work on. This is not Jamerson, but excuse me. This is not Jamerson. This is another bass player, but this is what he might do. Three. <laughs> so thanks. Yeah. So, so the bass line becomes a hook, a really a famous line. So most of the time, the great bass players and drummers also are given only a very loose framework of the song. Whatever in between is added by them on the moment as they play in the studio, really getting into a trance, feeling the music and being, being in the moment. Just give me one second. Okay, sorry. One last uh, example. I'll show you what we can do with Nati. What I'll do is I'll play four notes first and you'll hear the four notes and then I'll try to play with these four notes. I'll create my own line in the moment and uh, You'll see as I play. So the four notes are these ones. Three, one. Third note and the fourth note. Again, one more time. So I add a little bit more. Thanks. So, thanks. So, if I am hired to do the song, and then I just play this, the producers might not call me back again in the studio. Okay? That's boring baseline. So they need more meat, more action in the playing. So if I also do too much, then they will say, "Oh, this guy, this guy plays too much. We don't need that." So we have to be very creative and feel the mood of the song not to play over the singers. Maybe if there is a singer, I have to make sure I don't step on the foot of the singer. So we have to be very sensitive to the music and do somewhere in between. That's just right for the song. So as supportive players, drummer and bass player, we could do this. Uh, be creative within a supportive role. But this days, the good news is the bass guitar and the drummer, especially in uh, uh, fusion and jazz area, they get to be in the spotlight, finally. So a lot of bass players these days play solo, go up front with the sax player and the piano player, go up front and solo. The drummers also get a spot to solo. So uh, there's a lot of improvisation happening for our instruments. So when I say improvisation, creating in this moment, it doesn't mean uh, it came out of a vacuum. We, as musicians, we have to do years of practice on chords, scales, harmony, theory, everything, time, rhythm, everything that we have to work on, we have to work on very hard, many hours. After that, when it's time to play, what we do is we open the window and we throw everything away. And then we just let everything come out. It's, it's, uh, it's not easy, you know? Especially to really be in the moment, it's not an easy thing, even in real life. To really be in the moment right now and to play, I have to surrender. I have to surrender myself, be open, like, be like a channel for the universe to just let the music come out. Sometimes it might sound bad, and sometimes it could be magic. So there is that risk involved, to be right now, in the moment. And uh, so uh, it's not an easy thing to do. We have to practice it again and again. A lot of musicians have uh, a need to sound good. We all want to sound good, hip, play the, the correct thing. So that fear, 
not the need to sound good is also like a prison. It holds us back from really being open. So we have to get rid of the need to sound good and just be open and be in this moment and be creative. So I'll show you an, another example of uh, in the jazz or fusion area. Uh, a common thing in jazz is to trade four bars. Trade means the drummer plays four bars and I trade with him, I play four bars. He plays four bars and I play four bars. This is a common thing to do in jazz. So uh, first I'll show you the drummer will just play a groove, a groove and we'll count together. When I say four bars, each bar has four beats. So I'll show you, we'll count it together. So if not, you could play the groove for us. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, 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 four. Four, four, three, four. So every beat has, every bar has four beats. I don't want to be too technical, but uh, so what we do is, he's going to play it with the drum set. And then I'll help you count it as he, as he improvises. Four bars, I'll count behind him, okay? Now the solo part. Three, four. So, it's okay, thanks. So now we're gonna play a little bit back and forth. He's gonna do four bars, I'm gonna do four bars, he's gonna do four bars, I'm gonna do four bars. And uh, we'll play, okay. One, two, three, four. So we're creating in the moment, I'm playing around A minor area, sometimes I go away from it. And so Nati plays four, four beats, four, um, four bars of music, and then I play back four bars of music. So it goes on like that. So when we're on the, high, on the spotlight, as a bass player when I'm on the spotlight, I still have to know the framework of the song, the chord structure, the rhythm. Uh, even though I'm playing a lot of stuff here or I'm playing less, it doesn't matter. I still have to be in the moment, create something. At the same time, listen to the drummer, and feel, count that four bars, feel it. You know, we don't have to count it uh, anymore, we just feel it. We have to play so much that we, it's internalized, you know? So I still have to be aware of the four bars, but still be here and create in the moment. I don't know what I'm gonna play, I'm just playing in the moment. So, so it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's a lot of fun to do, to be right in the moment and create. Um, so uh, before we finish, uh, let me, let's do something together. It's a great audience, so. One of the things that jazz musicians do is, not only jazz musicians, all musicians, I think the ultimate for musicians, the ultimate thing for musicians is to play what they hear. What's in my mind, I would like to play it. Whatever in my mind, I would like to play it. So it's as if this instrument is not in my hand. It's like it's coming out of me. So I've mastered this instrument so much that whatever I want to say will come out, hopefully. So that's what, why we practice all these years. So to do that, uh, sometimes you hear George Benson, the famous guitar player and singer, doing that with the guitar. So I'll, tr I'll show you a little bit. I'll improvise and then I'll also try to sing what's in my mind. You know, m we don't have to be great singers to do this, you know. My voice will scare dogs away, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't care. I'll just sing something. But I will just want to show you what I'm intending to play is also at the same time what I'm trying to think as much as possible. Uh, so that's my goal. So if Nati will give me a nice groove, I'll just play. Um, a solo based on that, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Something like that, yeah. So, so thanks. So, if I'm playing, um, what I'm thinking, I'm trying to take it out uh, through the instrument. So that's why I practice all those hours just to be able to master that. So uh, let's do something together with the audience. So I'll sing something with the instrument, and then you have to try to do it right behind me. So you'll get a feel of that. Okay? Try it. Don't worry. Don't be scared. It's okay. One of the, thi the great things about music is, <laughs> one of the great things about music is, we, it's not that serious because we're not doing brain surgery. So if we make a mistake, wrong note, no problem. We just try it again and try it, do better next time. So no problem at all. Okay? So let's do something. <laughs> Boom ba ba boom ba 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 <laughs> so you get the idea, so thanks. Uh, thanks. 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 So in parting, uh, improvisation is uh, something that we do every day. Every second, every day we have to make decisions. And some, uh, some of you, when you came over here, maybe the road is blocked. You have to make a decision to go a different route. So every day we have to improvise in life, right? And. Uh, for me, and I think for everybody else, the, the f every, anything that we do, that's in the moment, is wonderful. To be fully present in this moment is an enlightened way of living. The message I want to give from related to music, we have to be fully present right now and do our best. From the past, we can learn, but we don't have to dwell there. And the future, we can control, we can plan, but we don't have to worry and live in the future because we're going to forget living right now. So that's my message. Thank you. <laughs>